Patients with previously treated high-risk CLL have a really poor outcome on ibrutinib monotherapy, but there seems to be some compelling evidence that a better approach might be a combination of ibrutinib and ublituximab. And this is being studied in the phase three genuine trial, and to talk about that, I'm with the principal investigator, who is Jeffrey Sharman, who is an MD and director of research at Willamette Valley Cancer Institute and medical director of hematology research at the U.S. Oncology Network. First off, thank you very much. We, I want to start a little bit with some information on the monotherapy clonal antibody that you're studying here, ublituximab. Yes. So there are, there are several CD20 antibodies out there, and each of them have slightly different uh, principles and properties to them. Uh, ublituximab has uh, been engineered uh, to maintain a certain piece of activity, such as complement activation, but also to enhance antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. These are different, w different aspects that you can sort of engineer in and engineer out of antibodies. So in this particular case, tell us about the trial and what you found using this drug. Yeah, so um, in your lead-in, you know, you mentioned that folks uh, with high-risk CLL um, you know, continue to have problems on abrutinib. And, and it, it's sort of a, a, a jump in, in history. You know, they do better on abrutinib than anything we've done before, but they still do less well on abrutinib yes. than others. So, so it is quite fortunate that, you know, we have these new drugs. Uh, but for those patients with 17P deletion or 11Q deletion or mutations in the protein called TP53, uh, their, the durability of their benefit is less than others. So if you don't have that and you're treated with abrutinib, you can oftentimes stay on abrutinib for years and years and years. But with those mutations, we see progression-free survival uh, sort of in the two to three year phase, which again, that's better than anything we've had before, but those patients still need new options. So that's how you're defining high risk. Yeah, high risk in, in CLL is oftentimes defined by molecular features. And so what did you find in using this particular uh, combination? Right, so this was a randomized phase three study and half of patients got standard abrutinib and then half of patients got abrutinib with the addition of ubilituximab. And the study was originally conducted under a special protocol assessment by the FDA in such a way that would lead to approval of ubilituximab uh, if the study read out the way we were expecting. Uh, it proved to be a challenging study to enroll um, because abrutinib is commercially available uh, and uh, there were some enrollment barriers. We had to modify the protocol. So uh, originally it had co-primary endpoints of overall response rate and progression-free survival, but following the modification it was overall response rate alone. And what we showed is we improve overall response rate very clearly. And that the, uh, it's true of no matter what uh, uh, response criteria you utilized. The, the trial was written for IWCLL 2008 criteria. Those criteria were subsequently updated, so we used both criteria to, to interpret the results. And in both cases, the responses were higher numerically. They were deeper responses with more complete responses. Uh, minimal residual disease negativity was obtained almost exclusively in the experimental arm. And we see a trend towards improved progression-free survival, but because the study is no longer powered for that endpoint, it remains unclear whether that endpoint will be met or not. And so this was all accomplished without really additionally clinically significant toxicity? Yeah, the, the ubilituximab really had negligible uh, additive toxicity, and, and in fact, even in some sort of toxicity categories, the combination appeared better than the single agent. Where are we now? Where do you think this is heading? So ublituximab is subject to several ongoing clinical trials. And from a regulatory perspective, you know, originally the study had, a, had sort of a FDA blessing if, if, right. uh, if, if it was conducted the way we had originally thought. It does put it into some degree of limbo as to um, uh, how the FDA would, would treat that and whether or not some of these other studies may be the, the more obvious way towards regulatory approval or not. So I think at this point, it's probably um, not my place to speculate on, on, on how the agency would, would uh, treat this data. How did you respond to the overall results of the trial? Were you happy with what you saw? Yeah, I mean, I think that, that prior to the study, there had been several single arm phase two studies adding a CD20 antibody to abrutinib. And all of the studies showed approximately similar results. This is the first randomized study to in fact verify that adding a CD20 has at least additive activity. There was some preclinical doubt that actually maybe abrutinib would interfere with CD20 antibody. 
Um, and I think we can put that theory to rest. So th 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 this study clearly shows that that's not the case. So it was a fun study to do in terms of what you, uh, what you learned out of it? You know, we, we, got, we definitely advanced the field in ter terms of some of the knowledge. I, I would love to have seen it you know, complete the way it was originally designed. Um, uh, you know, this is a very dynamic field and things are changing yes. incredibly quickly. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I think that this is one piece of a growing body of literature, really just improving outcomes amongst patients with uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I mean, this has been a really fun ASCO so far. It's been a lot of uh, interesting news. So please check around in Ash Clinical News and online for more of our interviews. For Ash Clinical News, I'm Rick McGuire.